Greetings and welcome to this video. It is a few days before Halloween and uh, one thing that happens during this time of year is the changing colors, the cooler weather, uh, the Christmas is right around the corner, the holiday season. And whenever this time of year comes, I get this burning desire to play major key hymns in minor. And it's a great thing to do during this time of year. They, you can spooken up the hymns and sort of Halloweenize the hymns, if that's a word, by changing major key hymns into minor. You can also change minor key hymns into major, but we'll save that for another day. So I am a church pianist. I play in a Lutheran church. This is the Lutheran service book here. And I am going to turn to page 507. 507, holy, holy, holy. Now, before I play this, I want to explain what's the point? Why do this? Why change major key hymns into minor? I mean, is it just some party trick? Or is it something that you can actually uh, used to benefit your piano playing, and I believe it's definitely the latter. Changing major key hymns into minor improves your thinking skills. You have to think right away, you have to transpose, you have to use another key signature that's not written in, you have to modify certain notes slightly, like sharps will become naturals, or flats might become uh, naturals or whatever. Uh, and you have to do that right on the spot. Improvisational skills will improve. Your improvisation uh, skills will dramatically improve if you turn major, major key hymns into minor. And that goes without saying, because you're just doing it right on the spot. You're not, uh, you know, it's not every single note, but you're getting large ideas and you're turning them into minor. And last but not least, sight reading. Your sight reading skills will improve as well because you'll be exposing yourself to more uh, hymn type music where you have vertical type chords, where you learn to read the whole chord from the bottom to the top. You can learn that more in 24 Easy Four Part Chorales by Box Scholar or Sight Reading in Harmony, also published by Box Scholar, as well as at least a dozen or more other books in this area from Box Scholar. So the links are below this video where you can explore Box Scholar's uh, resources for pianists. So without any further ado, let's turn our attention to changing major key hymns into minor. So I have the uh, Lutheran service book here, and I am on page 507. Holy, holy, holy. One of uh, the most beloved of all hymns. Okay, I'm going to play this first, as is in D major. No changes. verses in it. I played one verse in D major. Now we're going to turn it into D minor. Now what do you have to do to turn it into D minor? First of all, you have to change the two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, to B flat. And you need to do this right on the spot with your imagination, with your brain. So the music says two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, but Turning it into minor, you're going to pretend like those sharps are one flat, B flat. That means that every time you have an F sharp, you need to natural it. Actually, it's easier because there's more white keys. It's actually only one black key, the B flat. So we're going to take the F sharp, we're going to natural the F sharp because in D minor, the, the definition of D minor is having an F natural and not an F sharp. 
But now when we get to the C sharp, the C sharp is sort of a wild card note. And that's because uh, C sharp is the third of the dominant of D. It's the third of A major or A7. So um, the dominant A major is the dominant of D major and D minor. So C sharps are okay but not all C sharps. You want to avoid the, whenever you have a B flat going to a C sharp, you want to avoid that. So try to, so the general rule in this particular piece, turning D major into D minor or similar pieces, is that the, you want a B flat, but you want C naturals. You don't want C sharp in conjunction with B flat. But, but if you have a C sharp, then you're usually going to have a B natural. So in other words, you're going to have an interval of a second. And I'll show that to you after I play this, then I'll analyze it and I'll show you the changes I did to it. But first I want to play it in the key of D minor. So. spooky ending on there. It sounds like box Toccata and Fugue, doesn't it? All right, so here's what I did. Let's take it measure by measure. So all white keys here because no F sharp. You got to get that B flat in the bass. Now, right hand in the second measure, C sharp right there. But now, you want to make sure that now you go to C natural because you don't want you don't want that but you want that so in measure two you want to C sharp first but then you want to C natural here's what a sharp would sound like C natural. It's much better. Bach would have used a C natural there. The, the B flat and the C sharp form or belong to the harmonic minor scale. Usually hymns and chorales adhere to the melodic minor scale, not harmonic minor. The harmonic minor scale has an augmented second in there. You want to avoid that, even in spooky, scary Halloween kind of music. So uh, now we're in the third measure. So you have B flats in the right hand, B flat in the left hand, and then you want a C natural there in the left hand. is in the one, two, three, four, five. In the fifth measure, 
Uh, C sharp would work fine in the bass here for an A major. But then, like before, you want when you're going down the passing tone down to B flat, you don't want C sharp anymore. You want to C natural like we did before. Uh, C natural will work also in the middle. But I, I think I like sharp better. So sharp first, then natural in the bass. B flat major. Notice how when in a minor key, the sixth chord, the chord that's built on the sixth degree of the scale, is always major. It's not minor. So there are major chords here that are very important. That's a major chord. Now this G sharp in now uh, one two three four five one two three four one two three four five six in measure six. That G natural. Be the, the G sharp should be a G natural, okay? Now here you have two options. You can either play a B flat and if you play a B flat in the soprano, you're gonna need to natural that G down here. That's a really nice chord. Actually, that's a half diminished seventh. That's an E half diminished seventh chord, which is nice. It makes it really scary sounding. Same thing here. measure G minor do natural and F G minor and you have your a7 you need your C sharp in the right hand there and then it ends in a nice D minor and what I did for my ending before was I did a 4-3 suspension I went with a G in it, and then I resolve the G to an F natural, to F, E, F. Sounds like that Toccata and Fugue by Bach, doesn't it? You don't have to do that. You can also do this. You can put a Picardy third on it if you want. That means that we're going to change the minor into major. And that sounds really good in minor key pieces. So I'm going to play the last four measures here. So going to major sounds fine. And minor also sounds good. So you can choose one. I kind of like the minor one. It sounds more scary and more spooky. All right. Now let's turn to another key and another hymn, Amazing Grace. Uh, couldn't do this video without Amazing Grace, the most famous of all church hymns. Amazing Grace. You'll be surprised how good this sounds in a minor key. Okay, so I'm going to play the original in F major. This, by the way, is not all arrangements of Amazing Grace are the same. If you take 10 hymnals, you'll, you'll most likely have at least eight different keys or eight different uh, versions of this. So the one I'm playing here might not be the same as the one in your hymnal. That's why I'm putting this up on the screen here. So uh, this one in the Lutheran hymnal book here sounds like this. It's in the key of F major. It's number hymn number 744. So here's F major and in its original state.
that's as is in the key of F major. Now I'm going to play it in F minor. F minor. And then I'm going to explain what I did to do that. like doesn't that sound really spooky and scary I actually like it better in F minor than in F major when I play it in F minor I slow it way down and try to make it as as uh, as creepy sounding as possible it's a really beautiful actually okay so what you do here <clears throat> is that F major has one flat when the, the original is F major F minor What's the key signature of F minor? Four flats. B, E, A, and D flats. So right on the spot, you have to flat three more notes. Right on the spot. So you have to pretend like you have four flats here. And, and basically, you can play as is with four flats, except in the third measure, there's an E flat in the left hand. Do a, play a natural for that, for that flat here. So basically when you, have, when you have flats written in, extra flats, you're usually going to natural those. So, um, so we have the original has an A, a natural F minor. Flat here. I love that E natural there because of the, that's a really nice progression there. That sounds wrong, but listen when it resolves. It's like a 2 1 suspension. Actually, it would be like a either like a suspension or maybe like an accented passing tone maybe and like I said and when we're in the last hymn we played when you go to the sixth chord in minor it's major so if we're in F minor the sixth chord is D flat major so in this chord um, have D flat major. I like to double the bass. And then you want to natural the E. So in, in this measure here, in the end of that phrase, you want to natural the E in the right hand. Don't play E flat there because you need a C major chord because C major will prepare for the F minor. You don't want C minor. C minor would be would be that C major and that you can hear a big difference and then you want to keep the E natural here in this chord I see 7 8 9 10 11 12 this is like a 
13th chord, I think. <laughs> 13th chord. I don't play a lot of jazz, but I know that if you're a jazz player, you'd know right away what that chord is. I think it's like a 13th or something. Now, here's one of my favorite parts. That, that suspension again. When you do it in major, it sounds like this. Um, it sounds like this. It has a very open sound. It's still a 2-1 suspension. C going to B flat. Like we have B flat major. But when you're in minor, it, it's more of a more of a biting kind of sound. It's that it's a minor second apart, which is a good thing. It sounds really spooky. So. Now, I don't know if all versions of this have that particular 2-1 suspension there. 2-1 or 9-8, I guess. You would call it either one of those. So... This is only applies to this version out of this hymnal. So there are, like I said, there's many versions. So it might be different in your hymnal if you have a different hymnal. So. Ooh, B flat minor. You want a natural that E? Here's a couple different options here for the ending. You can do, you can do that, or you can do, or you can be a little more adventuresome. And I kind of like that. I like so I'm instead of going from B flat to C, instead of. B flat to C, you go B flat to B natural, and then you play a diminished seventh chord there. This works really well in minor. Diminished chords and diminished seventh chords work really well in minor keys, especially in cadences. this one more time in minor and I'll add that ending there and I'm gonna arpeggiate chords I'm gonna improvise a little bit I'm not gonna play exactly as written but I'm gonna improvise okay It wasn't anything fancy, but feel free to sort of just arpeggiate chords or add little notes belonging to the chord here and there. So here's, here's as written in minor. That's exactly as written in minor. And now here's a little improvisation. It, sound, it sounds much more natural that way. So I'm just sort of just softly sort of arpeggiating chords in the left hand like that. So that's Amazing Grace, one of my favorite hymns for turning into minor. And now last but not least, just as I am without a plea, which is really, it sounds, I love the sound of this hymn in minor. 
I absolutely love it. I wonder what Billy Graham would do. This was uh, Billy Graham's favorite hymn. I think he always used this hymn in his uh, when uh, people came up to the to the altar or for communion or something. I remember that he used to always use this hymn, "Just as I am, without one plea." I wonder what he would think of it in minor. <laughs> He'd probably roll over in his grave or something. Well, anyway. Just as I am without one plea, I'm going to play it first in D major as it's written in my hymnal here. And I'm not, not going to add anything. I didn't add anything. Now I'm going to play it in minor, but I'm going to first do it in, in D minor, but I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to improvise. I'm just going to just transpose it literally into D minor. gentle improvisation with rolling chords and that sort of thing so and doubling basses doubling basses so you can do a lot of the octaves in the bass and it's going to sound really rich in the key of d minor so here we go up there. Just play half of it. Last phrase. It sounds really nice. Isn't that? I love that Picardy third. Now here's what you can do. You know what, you know what sounds really good? Is you play it, let's say, um, Okay, I'm going to do it first in D minor, then I'm going to do it in D major. And it's a really nice change. Okay, so here's D minor.
at the minor. It's a really interesting effect. It's really effective, actually, when you change from major to minor. So you can also experiment a little with taking hymns and playing one one verse in minor and then the next verse in major. Maybe you can put a good transitional chord in there. There's lots of possibilities for this. And I think it's, it's a really excellent technique to learn improvisation and thinking fast on the spot and for sight reading. So thank you for joining me and happy Halloween.